Police in Kansas City, Missouri, say it was a dispute between several people that led to the mass shooting at Wednesday's Super Bowl victory parade. Democracy fucking now. You know, you just wonder how this, <laughs> you wonder how this old lady's been doing this as long as she has. What's the saying? Never let a tragedy go to waste? Oh, they can't let this go to waste. They gonna pump this to all they fucking can. In the first 46 days of this year, there have been 49 mass shootings in the United States. Typically, when somebody hears mass shooting, the mental picture that they connect that to is like a school shooting of like the real big tragedies. You know, they've changed that definition in the last couple years. I couldn't pinpoint exactly when they did it, but they have broadened that term. Any shooting occurs where three or four more people are shot. That is now considered a mass shooting. And if you're aware of any of the major cities across this country, that's happening once a fucking week. Almost 5,000 people have died from gun violence this year already, according to the Gun Violence Archive. Would it surprise you to know that they've included suicides in that? I'm sure most people don't quite realize that, especially when you preface it with gun violence. Over 5,000 people have died to gun violence already this year. Self-deletions that account for right around two-thirds or more to that. So it's like you can already get a real good vibe of where this segment's already going to go. Emotion over any sort of substance, broad stroking headlines over any sort of facts and reason behind it. Just get that typical Democracy Now! watcher fired up, ready to make new laws. We got to do something. We need to do something. I don't know what it is. Do it. Yeah, do that. Do that now. <laughs> for more, we're joined by Brittany Packnett Cunningham, an activist who's originally from Missouri, host and executive producer of the podcast Undistracted. Joining us now. Oh, an activist, huh? Yeah, no, I'm sure. <laughs> Democracy Now! loves bringing a good old activist. <laughs> yes, they fucking do. An activist, so-and-so. Come on in and give us your unbiased, reasonable opinion, will you? And talk about the gun laws of Missouri. Well, Missouri is a state where, unfortunately, pregnant people are um, not allowed to have any uh, autonomy over their bodies, and yet we don't trust those folks to make decisions about their bodies, but we do trust folks to be able to purchase a gun without a permit and wield it almost anywhere. Did this activist come straight in and conflate the issue of abortion rights? with gun rights. Oh, I'm sure there's a couple of you wacky motherfuckers out there to think that's just a superb fucking argument. But wowza, shorty come right in with the abortion. <laughs> Buckle up for this broad. She is a fucking wild one. As loony as the old hostess chick is, shorty right here got her trumped in spades. A very long legacy in Missouri of a Republican Party that is more concerned with protecting themselves in the rural areas and the mostly white areas. Got to get that in there. The mostly white areas. Just in case you weren't sure of her whole fucking foundation of every argument she'll ever make is race from those of us in the so-called urban cores who are most often black, um, then they are actually about the safety of all of their constituents across the state. Wait a sec, wait, 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 wait. So are you implying that there's different laws for the white folks in the rural areas than there is for laws of the black folks in the urban areas? Because I went and looked up these Missouri laws. You know, there, there's some pretty wide open fucking gun laws in Missouri, believe it or not. But if last time I checked, the same laws that the mostly white rural folks would have to abide by are the same fucking laws that the mostly black folks in urban areas would have to follow. If you can talk specifically about Missouri and these laws. Absolutely. So the gun laws in Missouri uh, place Missouri at number 48 on the Gabby Gifford scale in terms of the quality of gun control laws. That's 48 out of 50. There's not much worse the state could be doing. I could argue there's not much more they could do to not be the best fucking state in the country. <laughs> I guess potato potato in that sense. Shorty said, yo, they rank 48th out of 50 on some Gabby something gun law scale. And said, well, man, they can't do much worse. I'd argue they're doing pretty fucking good. If 
you gotta live somewhere, Missouri might be one of the spots you want to stay at. There's also a great incidence of uh, suicide by gun uh, in, in Missouri, rather. Um, and that's not even taken into account. Wait, wait, what do you mean that's not taken into account? They count those deaths, right? Shorty right out the gate with that 5,000 number quote, that included self-deletions. So I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Nobody takes self-deletions into account. Yeah, they do. Often we hear Republicans talk about the mental health crisis, but and that being the real culprit uh, in the gun violence epidemic in America. No, you don't. 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 The mental health are more an argument to specific shooting situations, not just the general theme of gun violence in America. Nobody's arguing that inner city gun violence is a lot to do with mental health, although I'm sure there are some. Sure. But if the argument is that Republicans claim to care about mental health, but yet don't want to do anything about gun violence, shorty, your foundation's like this. I'd be, I'd be nervous it's going to give way. You might break a fucking ankle. So let's talk about the comparisons you make uh, between the very loose gun laws in Missouri and why you feel it's important to compare that to reproductive rights laws and how uh, people are treated when it comes to issues like abortion. Oh, this should be really fucking good. <laughs> Shorty, <laughs> Shorty brought it right back to the abortion for her. Like, yeah, uh, why do you think it's a good argument to make that, uh, you know, they feel differently about abortion than they do gun rights? Oh, this will be fucking really good. Well, I think it's important because for decades now, the Republican Party has been presenting themselves as the party of family values, that they believe deeply in the sanctity of life. Well, if we really look at history, we know that the opposite is true. We know that the so-called Christian rights fight against abortion rights um, is actually rooted in the fact that they lost their fight to preserve segregation in America. Shorty just connected the fact that conservatives are fighting against abortion because they lost the fight against segregation. Are we just rewriting history here, folks? Is that what we're doing here? We, we, just, we just rewrite history into any way we want it for the sake of our arguments, as if it wasn't the Democrats who were fighting to keep segregation, that were fighting for the Confederacy, that were fighting to keep slavery, that were fighting against any sort of fucking progress when it come to the divisions between races. Yeah, that wasn't never the Republicans. I don't think that was ever the fucking Republicans who were fighting to keep segregation. But yet, not only that, they somehow lost that fight and then changed it to abortion because, I guess just cause. <laughs> bro, this is the most insane conversation, bro, I've seen in a while. Like, I just watched this the whole time, just mouth fucking just like, who the fuck is watching this shit? Not only watching it, but believing it, agreeing with it, thinking these are just fantastic fucking arguments. You mirror that supposed sanct belief in the sanctity of life against gun laws that are not only allowing for the proliferation of guns, but are very clearly causing catastrophe and chaos uh, in the streets of days that are supposed to be a day of celebration. And the the hypocrisy is apparent. Shorty, you keep using that word hypocrisy, and I don't think you know what it fucking means. It's just, you just imagine somebody trying to argue against your arguments when they don't understand your fucking arguments. There is no better case of that than this right here. Just arguing against straw men that nobody on the right, conservative, or otherwise would agree to. That somehow because they're against abortion, but yet think gun rights are an important issue, that somehow makes them hypocrites. You would only believe that if you didn't understand their arguments. It's that Sam Harris, I've said it a billion fucking times, I could tell you what you believe in a way in which you would agree, I doubt you could grant me the same courtesy. That's what that is entirely. Because God forbid somebody believes that gun rights is just a foundational right of every person amongst themselves to have the chance to protect themselves. And then to think abortion is murder somehow conflates the issues of, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite if you believe that. Yeah, that's fucking retarded. So this has never actually been about the sanctity of life. It's never actually been about uh, family values. And 
we constantly are calling out that segregation that that hypocrisy rather oh, oh you catch that you catch that we constantly are calling out that segregation that that hypocrisy rather yeah <laughs> like there's only certain words that they can keep in their head on fucking rotate and segregation is right at the top of that list so it just she can't help it it's just she wants to just revert into that fucking segregation and race and racism and fucking all the bull sucker shit that they just live and die by. But one thing is clear to me, that that hypocrisy, uh, it doesn't matter to the GOP, that they have no shame about that. Shorty got the nerve to talk about shame. Got the nerve to talk about there's no shame. <laughs> They've got no shame. Shorty, you are shameless. The way you could sit there and just lie, gaslight, and bad faith every fucking argument a conservative may have, you should feel shame. 100 fucking percent. So what we have to do is make it absolutely disqualifying if you are going to run for office to accept any money whatsoever from the gun lobby and to be someone who is proving yourself to uh, to purport and push uh, these kinds of lax gun laws um, at all costs. That should not be allowed in any state legislature, uh, at any governor's mansion, uh, at the federal level, the local level. That should Those kinds of beliefs, that kind of donation should be disqualifying. Do you feel the same way about about all donations? Do you feel the same way about Planned Parenthood donations? Do you feel the same about teachers unions? No? No, of course not. Of course not. That's totally okay because you agree with their fight and their push for all the things they want done. But God forbid they're on the opposite of the political aisle. All their donations and beliefs and things that they believe and fight for, that should stop. It really irks the fuck out of me when I hear people who make such a big deal out of donations from like the NRA, gun rights advocates and stuff like that, how yo, they shouldn't be able to donate. They shouldn't be able to do all this, that, and a third, but don't feel the same way about donations from groups that they agree with. You know, I might hear you if you had an argument that across the board it should stop, but when it's only directed in one way, you got the nerve to call somebody a fucking hypocrite or not feeling no shame. That's you entirely. Because I guarantee fuck a tea, you'd be all for a teacher's union or Planned Parenthood and all their donations and fights and drives and all the stuff that they do. But God forbid somebody on the fucking right don't see it the way you see it. And God forbid, I know you don't get their fucking arguments. Like you've shown it, you've shown it this entire fucking segment. Can you talk about the NRA's influence on the governor, Mike Pearson, on um, Senator, for example, from Missouri, Josh Hawley? Absolutely. You know, Mike Pearson's legacy, unfortunately, is one of cowardly obedience, that he has fallen in line with all of the beats that the Missouri GOP has forced him into. So arguing that the guy wouldn't be making the decisions he's making if it wasn't for the GOP making him do that? Because he couldn't just believe what he believes, right? I mean, imagine somebody believing what they say they believe and fighting to make that happen. That can't be true, right? Of course, of course, everybody really thinks the way you think, but yet somehow are controlled by donations and pressure from other groups to make decisions that they disagree with. I guess that's the argument here. I, I mean, dude, it's the same... It's the same fucking shit, bro. It's the same fucking shit. We're just, they got such a problem with the Republican does everything the same way they do it. Somebody's doing it the same fucking way you do it that you don't have a problem with your people's do it. It's a problem with them people's do it, right? That's that's hypocrisy at its highest. Um, and has been doing for a long time. Josh Howley, of course, who followed him and who famously ran from the violence that he stoked, just like Mike Pen uh, Mike Par uh, Parsons did. Famously ran from the violence he stoked. It's got to be a January 6th hit right there, right? Believe it or not, I don't fucking listen to most all this shit, at least all about January 6th. Fucking sick of hearing about all of it. But God forbid, you just wondered, that that had to have been what she's talking about, right? Josh Hawley cowardly running from the violence he stoked. To shut the fuck up. Um, at the parade that day, Josh Hawley has received $1.4 million from, uh, from the NRA. So Mike Pearson, Josh Howley, Roy Blunt, and so many others are simply falling in line. And unfortunately, these kinds of influences and that kind of money will continue to pervade not just Missouri, but the entire country if we allow it to. Shorty, I'm going to say it again. Unless your argument is to stop it across the fucking board, which I'd be all for, I'm with you. If that's the argument, is that we stop all political donations from all the groups and rights groups that want to get things done on a federal, state, or local law level, I'm with you. I'm all for it. Fuck it. 100% across the board. Cut it off. I'm with you. 
But if your only argument is against the NRA and groups on the right wanting to keep gun rights a thing, you're a fucking hypocrite. You're a fucking certified through and through motherfucking hypocrite. There were 800 uh, uniformed law enforcement officers at that parade. And because police are only ever set up to respond to violence after it's happened, they did not actually prevent that tragedy despite their massive presence. So would that not be the greatest argument you could ever make for gun rights? The fact that there were 800 police at that parade and it didn't stop this tragedy from happening. Is that not the greatest Gun right fucking argument you could ever hear in your life? I'm sure cops prevent some things. They're not going to prevent everything. That's why you might want to think about getting a gun that you can carry around at all times for in case that shit happens. Because bad things happen to good people every fucking day. But Shorty somehow thinks the fact that there was 800 police there didn't stop the thing from occurring. But somehow that's supposed to be a good argument for your case. That's that's a loser, Shorty. That's a big L. That's a big fat L. So we have to take a serious look at what true public safety from the ground up looks like. Ooh, true, true public safety from the ground up, of course. Just real generalities, nothing specific. All they want to do is just ban it. Fucking ban it all is, is, is their fucking answers. Fucking true. Fucking <laughs> from the ground up, of course. Instead of over policing from the top down. And part of that has to be ensuring that the flow of guns into our communities is stopped. It is absolutely the guns. And everybody who wants to make it so about something else is missing the point entirely. Shorty, you miss every point you could ever fucking miss. Every fucking point you could ever miss. Got the nerve. Well, we need to figure out a way to do it that doesn't do over-policing as well. Because that's what it would take. To ban all the guns, to fucking high, high capacity magazines and background searches and all these things that you want that are mostly laws in almost every state. Even Missouri, if you went to a gun shop trying to buy a gun, they gonna run a background check on you. That's just the way that shit works. Yes, it's constitutional carry. I looked it up, bro. Like laws are different in every fucking state. The fact that they're 48, Missouri I'm talking about here, the fact that Missouri is 48 out of 50, they're doing pretty goddamn good. Because I can promise you, you're never going to ban all guns. The only motherfuckers that are going to follow the laws that you want to incorporate are the people that were following the laws to begin with. They're the same people who wasn't killing nobody, wasn't shooting nobody, was doing everything you made them do before then. You up in tomorrow say, okay, no more high capacity magazines, no more assault style rifle. You do all that shit. The only motherfuckers that are going to turn it in are the people that are following the law to begin with. Most of the people that are doing all the killing are breaking hundreds of laws along the way. Every law that you fucking made in between A to Z, they broke doing what they're doing. Dude, it fucking blew my mind. I got to looking at this story and I found it real funny how almost every news segment I watched about this story, they showed no pictures of the people that actually committed this. They'll do anything not to talk about the real issues of why we got the murder rates that we do in certain areas of the country. It's the culture. It's the fucking culture through and through. They rap about it in every song they ever make. It is promoted, approved of, and applauded from every fucking angle of why you got people doing what you're doing. Yo, these was hood thug motherfuckers that were looking at each other wrong and pulled out guns and just started blasting. These ain't people who were following gun laws to begin with. They're breaking who knows how many laws before that. Yo, I got to looking at a couple of these numbers and shit. The murder rate of America by gun, I believe we're 32nd in the world. If you look at like the top 30 before us, half of those countries have got insane gun laws. Insane fucking gun laws. I think it's like per 100,000, we was like four or something. Some of these places are like 30, 34, 35 per 100,000 and got gun laws out the fucking ass. Gun laws in fucking ways that would just blow your mind if you heard about half of them. But yet people are still doing what they want to do because y'all just don't fucking get it. Shorty got the nerve to talk about you just missing the point. Shorty, you don't know what the fucking point is <laughs> when you can't address the problems as they come for what they are. 
Fucking almost all the gun murders in this country are done by handgun and are done in a city by a really particular demographic. You break it down, it's actually like 4% of the fucking country's population committing over 50% of almost all violent crime. That's just a fact. It is a reality that won't nobody touch. Won't nobody, they'll ignore it. They won't show you pictures of it. They'll show you their names. They'll show you the names, of course, but they're not gonna put a picture beside it. What was it, Ann Coulter the other day on Bill Maher? We may not know who did it, but we know for the fact that they haven't announced it yet of who it was, we know it ain't a white dude. Because if, if it was a white dude, God forbid if it was a fucking Trump MAGA dude. Oh, bro, that would have been, that'd have been that night. That'd have been five fucking minutes later. Front page blasted across the fucking country. Shit, they got that one clown that was on TikTok. Welcome to Shasta County. This motherfucker went on a shit went viral. Went on a fucking crazy rant. Talk about Taylor Swift and Trump and MAGAs and all this, that, and a third. Like, bro, is hood culture. It's a culture that you wouldn't want to be nowhere near if you were fucking around it. The one of the most dangerous cultures of fucking mankind. God damn, yo, motherfuckers are just so blinded with the fact that a gun is responsible for what the human does with it. That ain't the way it works. And I tell you, these motherfuckers want you defenseless. Half of these motherfuckers two years ago was begging for defund the police. Defund the police. Police shouldn't be able to do what they do. But now you're arguing that people can't defend themselves and then the only people that are gonna have guns are the police. To which you just argued there was 800 of them there and it didn't prevent it from happening. Let me protect my fucking self. Give me a chance. I'd like to give you the chance. God forbid we ever find ourselves in that predicament. Holding a gun in a lockbox with the fucking magazine in another lockbox, separated in two parts of the house, don't save nobody. These people want you defenseless. They want you defenseless and they will gaslight and they will lie about every fucking thing in between to make you that. Fuck you, democracy now. I'm gonna protect my goddamn self.